This week's episode on Reloaded, we're going to talk about underwater guns and ammunition. A lot of times when you watch a video on the internet or on TV, you might see a disclaimer or a warning that says do not try this at home. Now when it comes to firearms and explosives, something might look really, really simple on camera, but in reality there's a lot of crucial training and safety measures that are going on in the background. Now my last video for underwater guns was a great example of that. My buddy Destin from Smarter Every Day just released his video that he shot with the slow-mo guys from eight months ago. My video took over two months of trial and error to get ready for Shark Week. To give you guys an idea of what all goes into the video, I'll break it down into a few different categories. And the first thing I always focus on is personal safety. Now, weapon malfunctions and stuff like that can be extremely dangerous along with explosive malfunctions. And you have to really go through and dot all your I's and cross your T's, make sure everything's good before you go and pull off any shot. So I built a few different rigs to fire the weapons underwater to see how they would react before I did anything personally. Now, even before I put them on the rigs to shoot them underwater, I had to break them all down, do some maintenance on them, check them for stress fractures and stuff like that. You wanna make sure that there's no rust or anything like that that could potentially cause a, a total malfunction on the weapon system whenever it's being fired, let alone if you're holding it whenever you're firing. So after doing several tests on all the different weapon systems and stuff, I was confident in being able to shoot it myself. In fact, I actually set up a few scenarios with the AR-15 to show what different malfunctions would look like underneath the water. Another, another thing that I did was using the different types of ammunitions on the rigs because I wanted to see how it affected the barrels whenever the ammunition was coming out. So you want to make sure that all that stuff is, is, is safe for you to handle because the last thing you want to do is, is discharge a, a firearm underwater and uh, have a total malfunction right there with the hand that's uh, firing it. Next up was environmental safety. Now, whenever you're discharging a firearm, you're shooting, you need to know your target what you're shooting at and what's behind it. You definitely don't want to do this kind of stuff in a residential area or something like that that you are not 100% sure where your ammunition is going to be going because an accidental discharge in a residential area or um, a type of malfunction or something like that that might not go as planned could do damage, not only kill someone, but could do damage to someone else's property, your house, your pool, or whatever. So a lot of people have tried this stuff I definitely, definitely don't recommend it because the different calibers, depending on the, the angle at which you're shooting and how deep the water is and everything can really dictate how the bullet's gonna react. So after personal safety and environmental safety is camera safety. Most of the time we shoot with cameras that are worth more than what my life is. So getting them wet isn't an option. So we built a few different types of rigs. So to give you an idea of what we were using, we were using the Rated R slow-mo cam, the Phantom Flex, Phantom Miro, and the Phantom 1610. And one of the rigs was made out of mirrors. Uh, all we did was we'd take a acrylic aquarium, take and put a mirror board in at a 45 degree angle, take and put another bo uh, mirror board at a uh, 45 degree angle up above it at the top of the tank and have that shooting out over the water so we could shoot our camera straight across. And then uh, some of the other stuff that we set up was just an aquarium rig and then some of the housings had waterproof rigs that we could take and put the cameras completely underneath the water. There's a lot of attention to detail that went into something like that. It wasn't just sticking a camera underwater and then uh, filming yourself shooting some guns. Now the whole process seems like something very simple but it took a lot of time. It took months of research and building these different platforms and stuff, testing out different firearms, different calibers of ammunition to go in and know that I could use these really expensive cameras and not have to worry about anything being damaged or anything being harmed in the environment, myself, or the cameras. Now make sure you stay tuned because I will be getting into some very practical super cavitating ammunition really, really soon. Super cavitating ammo is really, really new, but the technology behind it's actually from the 60s whenever the Russians were using uh, torpedoes in this super cavitating technology to keep and maintain a specific velocity for the torpedo and be extremely accurate compared to the drag that you would normally receive on the object trying to flow through the water. On the AR-15 that I shot underwater, I haven't cleared the uh, malfunction on this just because I wanted to show you guys, but the, the bolt and carrier group is completely stuck within the, the barrel and 
few different things happen there to keep the brass from extracting on it. The, it looks like the, uh, the, the brass expanded in a weird way where it seized up inside the barrel. So I'm gonna have to take and uh, lube this up, break this down and clear this. But um, it's a really good example of a weapon malfunction underwater and how things can go wrong. I'm gonna pull up the slow-mo clips here. The flex and the mirror were shooting at 1080 at a couple thousand frames per second. And uh, it's more of a wide shot. And you get to see the cavitation of the bullet as it's, it's deviating through the water. Yeah, the difference between the 9mm uh, hollow points and the FMJs pretty remarkable too because the hollow points, whenever they start expanding, you can see the water start spiraling. It's already spiraling in the hollow point and everything from the, the rifling of the barrel, but it really, really accentuates it whenever the uh, hollow points are spinning through there and you kind of get that, that break in the, the, the bubbles there. Well, we'll just go ahead and show the AR-15 in this video, might as well. The AR-15 full metal jacket malfunction is one of the uh, really cool slow-mo clips from the, from the shoot. So you can see how I turned my foot. So I knew that the, the magazine would probably be coming down or the floor plate or something would be shooting down. So I, every time I fired the rifles, I, I kept them intentionally in front of me so that if anything did shoot down, that it would clear my foot. Uh, I'm shooting right-handed because if, if the brass comes out the side or some type of debris comes out, the way I'm holding it with my right hand, pretty much everything is clear. It's safe for the most part. Um, pulling the trigger on it, you see the, um, the gas is coming out the side of the, uh, the, the rifle there and then the magazine and the floor plate, the floor plate even, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of the uh, gas coming out the bottom there and uh, just pieces of the, the, the magazine coming out. It doesn't seem like too much of the velocity of the round was lost compared to the hollow point one, but uh, <laughs> you see like as my reaction of like move, sliding my foot out of the way as it's, as it's coming down and then all the gas coming out the top the top of the or the side of the rifle that's huge keep that in mind this is this is a uh, a scenario that i mean could potentially happen to anybody trying to fire different weapon systems underwater and it's again it's extremely dangerous i really wanted to give some type of an example where where people could see it's not something that you want to try at home malfunctions or something be taken really really seriously and um, hopefully you guys get a, a little bit of entertainment value out of checking out some of these slow-mo clips. Let me know what weapon system or what caliber you want to see in the comments below. And don't forget, new episodes every single week on Rated RR and new episodes are reloaded every single Monday right here on TechFeed. See y'all next time.